back to my channel let's sit down I'm using I'm using a new camera and I don't really know how to use it so let's sit down ha ah, this is cozy it's finally gotten cold enough like it's almost November and it's god it was just such a mild October and it's like nine degrees <laughs> so I can wear a cozy jumper dress so I have a cozy vlog this week mainly because I had a lot of work on so I didn't have time to do like a, a DIY video or you know something house related and I needed to take a day off and that's what we're gonna do today. There is a cute garden place that when I drive to the woods which is almost like every day because I need to get my nature fix. Do you hear the birds chirping in the background? Also um, this is a new camera which I'll chat out in a min minute. I don't know what the audio was like because I tried to connect my Rode microphone and it wouldn't connect for me. And I didn't have, I was watching YouTube videos trying to make it connect. So if the audio is not as good, I do apologize. I have a little fluffy thing on this camera that hopefully makes the audio sound a bit better. So yeah, there's a cute little garden place I wanna visit. And yeah, I just wanna have like a cozy, like afternoon. Definitely we'll be able to light the fire. I've only lit the fire once um, so far this autumn because it's been like so warm and I didn't want to waste like fuel and stuff. So I'm gonna bring you to like the cute garden place that I keep driving past and I see a sign and it's like, I can't pronounce the name, but I was like, ooh, what? I got stuck at the train station and I was like, there's a secret garden in there. And I Googled it and apparently they refurbished the greenhouse you know I'm off for the greenhouse and they like did it up during lockdown or else pre-lockdown but it's back open and it opens during the week and behind it there's allotments. Now I don't think I can barely manage my own garden let alone an allotment but I do see cars pulling into the allotments and I think someone I used to work with has an allotment up there but anyway I'm going to bring us on a little cozy ramble. I also have news, which I'll share at the end of the video or else this will just be 20 minutes of me talking absolute like waffle. But I do have an, a, a book update, which I feel comfortable sharing now because it's, it's taking, what's the word? It's gathering pace, it's gathering speed and it's no longer a seedling, the roots are established. So I'll chat about that probably towards the end of the video, you can skip ahead. I got a new vlogging camera because I said it in my like Corfu um, vlog that the camera I was using at the time, one of my old cameras, the autofocus was like really bad. And um, I like a camera that is dual functional, like the vlog cameras don't take amazing photos and I love photography. And I went with, the Sony ZV-10, there's a ZV-1, but I saw Zoella using that and I didn't like the audio. And this one is like the next one up and you can change the lenses. So it's got interchangeable lenses, which is great for when I travel um, and I wanna take like photography and things like that. It's lightweight, it comes on a little stick thing and it has a jack for an external mic, which is why I wanted it, but my external mic, didn't want to marry with it so I'm hoping that by having just like a second camera I needed a second camera for work um because some clients that I work with they want things in portrait for like reels and Instagram and social media and then they'll want things in landscape so sometimes I'm doubling up my work by having to record the same thing twice but on a different aspect so I was like having a second camera it'd be kind of handy anyway um, and my accountant might let me expense it. <laughs> oh, I also wanted to just have a vlog camera to do just a couple of extra vlogs. Um, vlogger, I do prefer doing like the home kind of projects and stuff on the Thursday. Um, but I was kind of thinking maybe on some Sundays, um, I'll try and do more like vlogs because it gets me out of the house in the sense of this time of year coming into autumn with the clocks changing with the evenings being dark i can 110 percent become a hedgehog <laughs> i become hairy too um and maybe having like a day where i'm like i'm gonna go somewhere cute and i'm gonna vlog it will get me kind of 
like out of my hibernation <laughs> so I thought I might do that so maybe not every Sunday but when I know I have something you know maybe somewhere cute to go or you know something um I will do like an extra little vlog now I messed up I should have put my um I'm gonna pour my coffee into a takeaway mug like a travel coffee mug um because I want to go to those cute gardens and I want to have something toasty in my hands motorway in the background but that tweet tweet perfection so those cute little gardens I went to they reminded me of the Malahide gardens the ones where you pay to go in and they have loads of greenhouses they're much like nicer I was just curious because you know when you pass something all of the time and you just want to know like what's in there and I had a little poke around at people's allotments because I've always just kind of been curious to see like what's in there. Another reason why I like going to gardens is it's free garden advice because whatever is dying in their garden is more than likely about to die in my garden and if they have something that's like working that isn't in mine because it's only like down the road I feel like it's free garden advice. <laughs> so I'm just in the woods because if I'm on a day off, well, even when I'm working, I have this habit of taking like two hour lunch breaks and just going on a walk. The perks of working for yourself, but fave thing is just coming to the woods and having a walk and having like a bit of nature, especially like I said, with the clocks changing, I need to kind of get my, my vitamin D hit during the day. Um, it hasn't been too bad, like I think it gets dark now at half six or like six o'clock but I think in like a week or two, I think in another week, like the last weekend of October isn't it, 31st, the clock's going to change and that's when it'll be like dark, like the mornings I think it gets bright about half seven, quarter to eight. I know those who like aren't a fan of the dark nights will, will get my, my struggle. But yeah, I'm just having a little bit of forest bathing. It's just so nice. I'm actually kind of hungry now, so I think it's I think it's lunchtime. But I want to show you the little sheep. There's like little sheep um, and like highland cows further down. I love how I'm always trying to like manifest like a cute cottage in the country, and then I'm like, you can still manifest that and live that without having to own the cottage in the country. So I just go around these walled gardens pretending they're mine. <laughs> if I won the lotto, the lotto hasn't been won, it keeps getting rolled over and I keep thinking I'm going to win. 
I won two euro off it actually. And I'm like, yeah, it would be a walled garden with a greenhouse and near the woods. But then I'm like, you're already living like a millionaire then because you've got a woods, doesn't have to be yours and you can go and look at walled gardens. So perspective, I'm sure it's a lot of hassle trying to run a walled garden. You need a gardener. Anyway, let's go look at sheep. Because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my tracksuit on because it is to rain the weekend and it's a lovely day and I think I'm going to cut the grass and my neighbours slag me because whether it's summer or like autumn, I love cutting the grass. <laughs> but like even if there's a daisy, like I am getting better, like I try and leave, like leaves are good, leaf mould and like daisies are good for the bees but I love cutting the grass and because it's been so mild I reckon two more cuts and that's it until spring I reckon if I cut it now which is the end of October then I reckon one more cut in November to get up the last of the leaves and then I'll leave whatever is there until maybe February March I just love cutting the grass. <laughs> Actually, tonight is the last gardener's world of the season, so I'm like, what am I gonna do with me Friday evenings? I live for watching Gardener's World, but actually my friend Karen is like, watch the really old episodes. Um, If you need a gardener's world fix, she's like, they're all on YouTube. But what I wanted to show you is, I went into little aunt, so they do these like, seasonally so like halloween time is when you'll get these so banshee bones i have to say ireland if you ever come to ireland we do waste snacks like oh my god these so they had the, oh smelling them it they're like pickle flavor is it pickle? smelling them makes my mouth water they, so when i was a kid actually why do things taste differently from when you were a kid do the items change or do your taste buds change? I'd say the items change because half of the banned stuff had to be taken out of them. But Banshee Bones, oh my God. I think they brought them out last year as limited edition because you couldn't get them for a long, long time. And I was in little and I got 12 pack, three euro 12 pack. They're in me goody draw. <laughs> so yeah, I loved them. And my niece and nephew, oh my God, they love the sweetie draw. So my sweetie drawer is full because I got a few like extra bits for Halloween. You know, people, I, I, people are going to be knocking on the door this year, aren't they? There was no, I was about to call them knickknackers. <laughs> knickknackers. There was no knockers last year. Well, obviously lockdown because we went into lockdown for Halloween. And I remember being like, no one knocked on my door. It was a weird time because there's a couple of kids on my road and I would have like sweets for them. This year, I think we are back to normal in the sense of you knock on my door, I'll give you some sweets. But yeah, they're like little, they're like a salt and vinegar pickly flavor. Oh, the problem is you need to eat that like five packets of them. <laughs> well, I do anyway. So I'm gonna try on a tracksuit and then I'm gonna cut the grass and then I think I want to plant some echinacea so I have some seed that I got and I noticed that Monty Don was planting a lot of his perennials now. So he was planting seeds to leave them over winter and because I have the greenhouse now, I can do that so I can plant seed. And like I have some anemones on a tray, they're starting to come on. So I could plant them now and just overwinter them. So I think the theory is you get a stronger plant. Um, sorry, his annuals, he was overwintering them, but echinacea is a perennial. So I have actually two pots of echinacea and I love that they come up in the garden around, around August, they do be at their best. And it's like they fill that gap of summer coming into autumn 
and they give a lovely colour. So I think the seeds I got are pink echinacea. The echinacea I have in my garden is white in the two pots. So I do plan to have more plants on the left side of the garden next year. So if I can grow, obviously growing from seed is the cheapest. So I think I'm going to do a bit of that. So let's pot her into the garden and then I should be able to light the fire and get cosy. I love the feeling of being outside all day on an autumn day and it's starting to get cold and doing your bits of work and like in the garden and then you light the fire and you put your feet up. When I light the fire and put the feet up I will have the chats about the book which is really exciting but I feel like we need to be toasty by the fire for those chats. Heating my bum by the fire for the chats. Randomly, I got these logs. I think they're made from wood chipping and you break them. Hang on. Oh. Yeah, they look like they're made from wood chip and you just throw them in. But they don't make the same crackle from like a wood. Okay, book update. Back in a vlog in springtime, probably around about May time, I said that I made a proposal and I submitted that proposal. And I don't think I said what happened with that book proposal, but basically I kept going. Had spoke with a book publisher and that's why I was kind of making the proposal. So a book proposal is basically like a mini book. So um, the outline, and examples for each of the chapters an introduction so i think it was like 60 pages and they accepted my proposal and they offered me a publishing deal and it was in may and it was a friday it was one of the fridays that you could come out of your i don't think it was your 5k but I think it was like a restriction anyway and that Friday was my first Friday to actually meet up with my friend Karen at the garden centre for a cup of tea. You, there was no even dining, you couldn't even indoor dine or outdoor dine, it was literally takeaway coffee and chairs and I got a phone call at like 10 to 9, I was meeting Karen at 9 and she got to share the news with me because writing a book in the end of like the pandemic or well in the third lockdown let's say um was actually really lonely and all of the glamorous things that you would think would be glamorous were like not glamorous at all so around about like I think it was mid-May I just kept plowing on like with the book and then my publishing 
what would you call it contract publishing deal basically the contract on nice fancy paper arrived and it was literally just me blondie and pepsi at the time pepsi wasn't actually well at the time and i signed my book deal book deal that's the word i'm looking for i signed my book deal by myself i had to go and get like a, a black pen because i'm really fussy and they had signed whatever colored pen they had signed it i didn't have a colored pen so i went and got a pen signed it went to the post office and posted it back and i was like i always imagined signing a book deal would be a big deal like there would be champagne and there would be you know a little celebration but obviously because of like covid and stuff i couldn't go into like the office or things like that so it's been quite a solo process so we have a book deal everybody and the book is done almost ish and that's one of the reasons why this week is just a vlog because i'm at the edit stage so my editor Nicola is absolutely lovely and I met her last week and I was worried that they would be like you need more time because books take a long time and I said bring it forward by a year so when I first spoke to them they were like oh 2023 and I was like that seems like a long long way away and they were like yeah people don't realize that books take a long time because they have to, I don't know, even putting them to print and stuff. So I said, I when they offered me the uh, book deal, I said, listen, like, if I keep going and if I keep writing, could I, like, have it out in 2022? You know, because I have most of the content for the book. It was just rewriting it for a book. And they said, yeah, plow on. And if you can get everything, like, written by, you know, August, then we will put it through for 2022. So I was like, okay, challenge accepted. And now I'm like, oh God, it seems everything is happening so fast now. But basically I chipped away at it. I got up Monday to Friday at 6 a.m. And I did six till about 9 a.m. And I didn't have the luxury of just working on a book because I had to make sure I kept all my other jobs going so like uploading YouTube videos and uploading decent YouTube videos not like just any old crap like I've done some good DIYs and some good projects and then also like freelance stuff and you know working with brands etc so I would have loved them to just be like you think of people who write books and you think of them in like cute stone cottages taking time off to write a book but there was no luxury of hiding in a cabin in the woods and writing a book so that was what I did so 6am because that's when my brain is like most uh how would you say active it's so funny when I met with Nicola the editor she was like um oh, I need you to like relook at the introduction and I was like I don't remember what I wrote and she's like yeah that happens sorry my legs are going dead so my publisher is the o'brien press um i'll pop their like instagram here if you want to follow them Um, they publish some like really good books like proper books uh to have a book published my first book maybe there'll be more i don't know it's kind of like birthing um i'm going through that oh god i never want to do this again phase but maybe when it's like birthed to the world i'll be like hmm, i'll do another one so to join their list of writers it's so weird to like I, I don't like label myself even when people ask me what I do for a job I just tell them I'm an accountant or something because it's like too hard to explain but um yeah maybe I'll be like I'm a writer now yeah to join their list of authors is a privilege they're a really nice team to work with as well so far I've been working with Nicola who's my editor and then Emma is working on like the design so i have a list of things because obviously everything in the book is photographed by me and written by me and i need to do some reshoots for like some of the projects that's gonna go in the book so hence why um there's a vlog this week because i need a week i'll probably need more but i only have a week to go through my list of like reshoots and i have to just look at the copy for certain things and then thankfully, because like I use like spell check, Grammarly, I use all of the like 
writing tools um nicola has the job of doing like the copy edit so some things might have to be trimmed back and um, some things might need more stuff so the timeline is really tight now so i think it's gonna be published i don't have like a release date yet but we're looking at early summer 2022 so that's really soon it's less than a year probably after christmas it will be like finalized like everybody will have their opinions on it the cover will be picked funny story i shot possibly the cover i say possibly because it can change at any time but i shot what could be the cover up in my bedroom and like me knickers were on the rad like and i always thought god shooting a book cover there would be hair there would be makeup there would be photographers no it's me on my tripod just like always <laughs> there's nothing glamorous about like the books but the one thing is i have had a lot of fun like going through all of my dainty archive of stuff and like photographing new things and like to have all of your creativity in like one thing like it it's gonna be i say it's gonna be quite emotional keep emotions for when i have it in my hand so now that i've had proper feedback and i know for 100 percent it's going to be made into a book and it's not a hey but i i feel comfortable telling people because when it was a seedling as in an idea and an offer chipping away at it I didn't tell um, many people. I literally told a couple of my really close friends, my brother. I didn't even tell my mom. And I had to keep it. I'll use a garden you, like example. Hang on, I need a pillow because I literally am getting pins and needles and my back is now on fire. So when you have a seedling, you have to protect it from the frost. And the frost is other people's opinions or other people's input which everyone can have their input now because it's established it has roots it's a bit sturdier than a seedling do you know what i mean like it can take a bit of feedback now and a bit of whatever so it's now at a stage where i mean they could still pull it and say it's shit but it's gone ahead like <laughs> I, you know what i mean so a couple of things is if you, so it's gonna launch in ireland first and then you can buy it when the book launches from like O'Brien Press. You can buy it off their website, but it won't be on Amazon until roughly two, two to three months after it has launched here. I, they explained it to me. I don't kind of fully know how or what, but it will be like in the shops here and it will be like available to buy online so just a heads up that if you i'm sure they'll have like maybe pre-orders or something i'm not too sure i've just been worried about finishing the book i haven't thought about like you know there's a sales team i think that look after that stuff which is amazing that i don't have to try and look after everything i just have to do my bits and um yeah i imagine there will be like a pre-order and stuff so after christmas i'll probably have more information on that but just that when it comes to like amazon and those kind of selling places it will be later um for that but you will if you're in like the us australia canada europe um you will be able to purchase the book online when it launches um possibly through a pre-order and but just if you are someone who's like buys things off like Amazon or whatever it will be a little bit later when it's available on that platform so that's my news I have kind of been keeping like a little a little secret but it's just some creative projects I think you need to hold them close to your heart until they're ready because this like industry so many projects like don't follow through and if you were to tell everybody about every offer and everything like you'd be looking like a spoofer because 90 percent of things fall through and um, so that's why i was a little bit precious about sharing like the news on this but uh, the book is done it's i i can't wait to see it in a physical book because like they had sent me like i'm not a book writer um i write and i put things you know together and i take pictures and stuff but like sticking it all together thank god for editors um but to see it in like a physical form because they sent me examples of books of what like it could look like so i was like 
holding their books and looking at them and stuff. So to see it with my stuff on it and like flicking through it and it's like a body of work, it's gonna be so weird. I wanna go to like the little warehouse where they like print the books and stuff. Um, but yeah, next year, 2022, all going to plan should be a fun year. And in terms of like book stuff, so I'm trying not to think too far ahead because I've just been doing one step at a time. I've also been trying to release from any outcomes because um, Nicola was saying there was like a sales meeting and that's when you're like, oh God, there's so many other people involved that you're like, oh God, will it sell? Um, because she had like a sales meeting and that was like people from, you know, booksellers and they pick, oh yeah, we want that book or yeah, we'll sell that. And that's when you're like, oh God, like I was just doing it for fun. Like, but then when you see like there's, you know, bookshops who buy it and promote it and whatever, that's when you go, oh, this is actually real. It's not just, you know, a fun project. But one step at a time. I am super nervous for the PR end of things. You know me. <laughs> I absolutely hate public speaking. And I, I hate doing like, my nerves to be gone doing the live radio and all that. That's gonna be something for next year that I'll have to just push out of my comfort zone, get comfortably uncomfortable with doing like PR stuff. Um, that's the one thing I am a bit like nervous about. But then on the other hand, um, I would love to do like book tours or like intimate things like, in bookshops or I don't know what way that works but like to actually meet people and um, so I'm excited for that I'm not excited for like you know PR with media or whatever whatever I want to like meet you guys that's what I'd be excited about um but I don't know anything about that just yet probably after Christmas um is when all that will happen but all of a sudden it just seems like it's super quick and everything is like happening really fast and I also have other work that I need to do so I'm just getting my head down and chipping away and yeah that's that's what I'm doing. My hair is on fire so I have to, <sighs> I'm so wet. I've no other news I don't think um, or anything kind of exciting coming up. I got nominated for some award um, which I don't know how I feel about awards. Like I used to be mad for them and I used to be always wanting to like win an award. And then like you realise that like you're, nothing happens when you win an award. As in like you're still the same like but I think what I'm trying to say is and I don't want to sound like an asshole but like you can waste your self-worth on awards when really like you should just only you can kind of fill up your self-worth tank i don't know if that makes sense but i got there's a free meal <laughs> so it's actually with stellar magazine Um, i actually would have read their magazine um when i was younger they have like i think it's like instagram instastar awards which is i was really like oh i'm surprised i'm nominated in i think the lifestyle category because this year i've probably been on instagram less um, than any other year because I was like chipping away at like the book and I just don't be on it as much as I used to um, but it's nice to get like a nomination and, and like to be recognized but I'm just going for like the free meal because I had a couple of people message me and say oh right, my legs are proper dead now yeah I had some people saying like oh you got nominated for a stellar award uh, and I was like I'll just go for the free meal it's like a sit down dinner and like I think they're sponsored by some tequila brand. <laughs> some of my pals are going, my girlfriend Karen is actually nominated in the beauty category. You can vote for Karen. Um, I would actually love to see Karen win because she does really good beauty content. Um, I'll put a link in the thing. You can vote for my pal Karen. Her website is actually really good if you want like in-depth beauty reviews. I know a lot of people on social media are kind of like, oh, look at this lipstick, but she will actually do like an in-depth kind of review, which is really helpful and swatches and stuff. And she's also back making YouTube videos. So I'll link to her channel in 
my description box. Yeah, we actually, I haven't been to like a fancy thing in so long. Um, obviously with like the restrictions season and stuff. Um, so we actually, I think we booked a room in the thing. So we're gonna like make a proper night of it. It means like if we get too drunk, we can just go to bed. <laughs> I'd say a couple of other people will probably do the same and stay in the hotel, but I'm gonna treat it as like an early Christmas party. I can feel my cheeks being like rosy and rosy from the fire. Before I combust from the heat of this fire. Um, that is me for this week. If there is somewhere cute you would like me to go, that is within the Dublin, Kildare, Wicklow, Louth area for like a little cheeky daily vlog. If there is somewhere cute you would like me to go, just pop it in the description. I can't go to the west and over and back in a day. That's an overnight stay. And right now the calendar is full. But for a little day off, um, I'm always drawn to like the mountains. I love going on little hikes, you know, up in the mountains. And I probably should get one or two hikes in before the weather changes. So that's all my news. Cheeky thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you all in next week's video.